Zambia is mourning one of its renowned freedom fighters and member of the country's first cabinet after independence, Sekota Wina. He also played a key role in liberation of a number of African countries, especially those in the southern region. Wina, who joined South Africa's African National Congress, died on Wednesday. He's being remembered in various ways by his country and some around the continent who knew his contribution. Arthur Davis Scopo reports from Zambia. He was one of the last members of the first cabinet remaining after the country got its independence from Britain in 1964 and became to be called Zambia from northern Rhodesia. Born in 1931, Scott Awina never fought Zambia's independence only, but for many other African countries including Zimbabwe, Angola, Namibia and Botswana while others like for South Africa. He recalls how he fought against the apartheid regime when he was a student union leader at University of Fort Harry, where he was later expelled due to his political activities. Akashambatambiko Zitaliwanika, veteran politician and senior citizen, can attest. The first political party he joined was actually the Youth League of the African National Congress of South Africa. His presidency at, as a student leader at Fort Hare coincided with the, the introduction of uh, the Bantu education policy by the apartheid regime, which of course was protested against. And he aided the protest at Fort Hare against it. And it led to him being expelled from Fort Hare in 1955. Mr. Winner, during the bestow of Oliver Regional Tambo's house in Lusaka as a national monument by then Zambia and South Africa's presidents Edgar Lungo and Jacob Zuma respectively narrated his encounter with Oara Tambo as they fought for South Africa's liberation. And the history of South Africa and Zambia is, is goes way deep, way deeper than we normally uh, expect. Oliver Tambo established a very, very high standard of behavior. From time to time he would sneak in. Uh, we were very close to my elder brother, Arthur Wiener, and from time to time uh, he, he would go to Arthur Wiener's motel. He was a very serious-minded man. The freedom fighter, later turned journalist, Mr. Winner would not miss an opportunity with a journalist or young person to tell them about Africa's struggle and sometimes share the African liberation anthem as he shared with this journalist in one of the interviews. In the struggle for Africa, there is victory for us. That was a celebration conference in 1958. But then the whole purpose of that conference was to tell Africans that value what you have attained. And Nkrumah was the first one to call this, and I think there must have been some 58 nations which attended that one. It was there that the African liberation struggle was real, made permanent. Many are paying glowing tribute to the fallen African freedom fighter, with Zambia's president, Haka Indehijilema, posting on social media, extorting Mr. Winner, describing him as a proud patriot. I asked senior citizen Akashamba Tombiko Sudaliwanika, who was given the right to republish a book by Scott Awina, A Night Without a President, how he remembers this man. Well, I received it with a, a shock because in the last uh, few weeks um, and last months, I've been working with him. I republished it with an addition of a post by myself and he participated at its launch so he was able to come out of his house address a crowd and he was uh, he looked much younger than his age he maintained his old humor and of course related to the history that he knows from personal experience very very well for the continent mr liwanika urges Africans to pick up from where Mr. Scott Awina left from. And the objective is to make sure that a day will come when Africa is fully in control of its own land and natural resources. The struggle is not over. We have not reached our objective. So the current and future generation are challenged to revisit that mission. One of the critical wishes for Africa was to see it compete against other continents. Hence, Mr. Wiener 
placing a challenge on young people. The problem I find myself, which is very, very, very disturbing, is the indifference among the young generation, in that they are not picking up the changes of, of African politics, economic development, exploitation still existing. In the land of the black man, suffering will never cease. Indeed, Zambia, and of course the entire continent Africa, has lost one gallant son who worked and labored for the African continent. Reporting for the SABC's Channel Africa in Lusaka, Zambia, I am Arthur Davis, Skopo. That report by Arthur bring the time to 25 minutes after 1 o'clock. This is Africa Midday. South Africa's retirement industry does not believe that Treasury will be able to implement South Africa's new two-point retirement system by March next year, as it involves an enormous amount of work. Well, that's one of the key findings of Sunlim's latest benchmark survey of South Africa's retirement industry. The 2022 survey polled, among others, healthcare consultants, top umbrella fund sponsors, and online consumers. And to discuss this, we join now on the line by Nzwa Shoniwa, who is the head of Sunlam Umbrella Fund. Nzwa, thank you so much for joining us. Welcome to Africa Midday. Afternoon, Zikwana. Thanks for having me. It's great and to have you here. Firstly, explain to us this uh, new 